So our next presenter is Alison Bullock, who is Director of Acquisitions at Libraries and Archives Canada. Alison will be providing an update on the Canadian efforts to develop a national print preservation strategy. Over to you, Alison. Can you hear me now? Yep, perfect, thank you. Okay. <laughs> We're all getting used to this technology. Um, so uh, what I said was, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk shared print. Um, and just to mention that while I'm delivering the presentation today, this initiative was co-sponsored by the Canadian Association of Research Libraries. Slide two, please. Um, I won't linger on the outline. Essentially, I'm going to talk about our work to establish a national print initiative in Canada and the pilot overlap study undertaken as part of that work. Slide three, please. So just a bit of um, context um, before we get into the nitty gritty. Um, Canada is slightly bigger than the US geographically, but with a tenth of its population. Um, this contributes to a particular culture uh, amongst libraries. Libraries are publicly funded. They face exactly the same problems that plague libraries globally regarding funding, space, cost of collecting, uh, digitization, and so on. Uh, there is a lot of collaboration, particularly at a regional level, and I think you have heard in other meetings of this group about some of the regionally focused uh, and quite mature print initiatives in Canada. Uh, the fact that we're thin, thinly populated means that we have a pretty good digital infrastructure. Heads of Canadian academic libraries began discussing shared print at a national level about five or six years ago and retain a high level of engagement with these initiatives. Uh, Library and Archives Canada was involved in initial discussions and um, we are a bit of a fail safe, I think, for Canadian publications. Uh, the fact that we retain two copies of every format of Canadiana, one of them in a preservation environment, makes us a good comparator library, uh, as well as giving librarians some reassurance if they have to make uh, tough deselection decisions. But as we'll see later, uh, LEC doesn't have everything. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the fall of 2018, uh, Library and Archives Canada and the Canadian Association for Research Libraries agreed to establish a working group that would tackle shared print at a national level. As I mentioned, it followed on from work done in 2015 uh, to develop principles for shared print in Canada and uh, uh, co-sponsored um, LAC and CARL event to discuss um, shared print. This would not have been possible without interest and support and phenomenal expertise from libraries and librarians, particularly those already engaged in shared print initiatives. The group was co-chaired by a representative of CARL, uh, Gwen Bird from Simon Fraser University in British Columbia, and by my boss, uh, Monica Fexcott at LAC. I should say that we also benefited at the beginning from the expertise of Susan Stearns, who we just heard from, from East, and as we grappled with the retention scenarios, uh, Ian Bogus from Recap joined our meeting. So thank you to both of them. Um, the objectives of the working group are outlined. Uh, essentially, we tasked ourselves to develop a national framework or strategy for shared print that would enable libraries to consolidate collections while being assured that copies would be preserved and accessible. We've pretty much uh, wrapped up this work and expect to draw this phase to a close in the next month or so. Slide five, please. So slide five shows what we set out to do as the underpinnings of the framework for Canadian national shared print. We looked at what is being done in Canada as well as internationally, and we looked at the number and type of storage facilities in Canada. We developed a retention and access framework, a governance proposal, and undertook a pilot project as a kind of proof of concept. These reports are all on our website, whose address appears at the end of the deck, so I would encourage you to check them out if you're interested. Slide six, please. So we come to the pilot project about which we had many discussions. Where to start? Uh, a national overlap study of Canadian government publications. Uh, some of you, certainly those who've been engaged in shared print, may be scratching your heads at the notion of starting at a national level with GovPubs, and not only GovPubs, but both serials and monographs. 
the idea of starting with government publications arose from concerns that were expressed by librarians that government documents in Canada were being deselected in significant numbers or being digitized without common preservation standards. In other words, these publications were at risk. And these are some of the project parameters. Uh, the 26 participating libraries were selected because they had been involved in the original print preservation discussions in 2015. Most were academic libraries, but there was one large public library, as well as um, LAC, the Bibliothèque et Archives Nationales de Québec, and our Library of Parliament. While the uh, project was funded by LAC and co-sponsored by CARL, the libraries themselves invested um, the time and expertise um, very generously. In terms of the technical under underpinnings uh, for the overlap study, Library and Archives Canada implemented OCLC in 2018, and the participating libraries all had subscriptions to OCLC, um, which made it easy to use uh, green glass. We used information in OCLC WorldCat rather than local holdings records for this study. And from the outset, because of the funding available and some other considerations, we decided, we decided to stop at the title level rather than identifying individual copies. Again, many of you will recognize that this is a departure from the norm uh, because overlap studies generally seek to identify actual copies to be retained. Slide seven, please. We were quite um, inclusive in developing the strategy to identify publications. I think it was about a 10-term Boolean search in the end. Um, it may have been too inclusive, as it turns out, particularly coupled with variations in metadata that are common with government publications. Uh, this slide gives a snapshot of the results. There were 18 million distinct titles overall in the 26 participating libraries of about which 4% were identified as Canadian federal publications. On average, less than two organizations in the pilot held a title, and 68% of the titles were uniquely held, which was a surprise to us as the Government of Canada provided publications um, produced by Canadian federal agencies to libraries across Canada through the Depository Services Program. At Library and Archives Canada, whose mandate it is to comprehensively collect Canadian publications and who has a mandate to preserve and provide access to government information, uh, we had about 350,000 of those. So there were a lot of publications that were missing from our collection. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we then moved on to retention. Uh, the proposed retention model considered um, a number of parameters uh, that are, again, common in shared print. Um, what the purpose is of retaining the risk to the materials, the number of copies that we needed to mit uh, mitigate that risk, uh, how long uh, materials should be retained, um, uh, lax mandate and role, perhaps not um, common to a lot of other print initiatives and the fact that it was a mixed population of both serials and non-serials. And in the end, we set out a scenario for serials and one for non-serials. Um, the serials, based on what we were seeing in the data, uh, we decided to retain all if, they, if none of them were at, if they weren't at LAC. And for non-serials, we decided three if they were held at LAC and five if not. The retention scenario was applied, and we discovered that under this model, uh, participants would have been asked to re retain over 1 million titles, uh, 992,600 uh, monographs, and about uh, 94,500 serials. At the same time as we were doing this and working with libraries to look at what that retention uh, scenario could look like for them, we floated a draft MOU that laid out what organization, organizational obligations would look like in terms of access, preservation, length of commitment, et cetera. And the organizations justifiably raised concerns at that point. Um, not all library holdings were up to date in OCLC. Uh, there was a feeling that material may already have been deselected. There were data anomalies. Uh, we have been liberal, as I mentioned, in um, identifying material. 
and we did address some of the data anomalies uh, before we applied the retention scenarios. There were concerns about data verification. Um, as an aside, LAC undertook verification on a sample of four to 500 items that we had on our list and found 95% of our material on shelf. And we've been looking at a 25-year commitment for official repositories, which was also very challenging for some of the participants. As we listened to all the feedback, we realized we needed to take a step back. Slide nine, please. So we revised the approach to focus on titles that were held at three or less participating libraries and proposed that these be flagged with a bilingual note to indicate that the titles are scarce. And we're in the middle of finalizing this approach. Slide 10, please. While we didn't get to quite where we planned with the pilot, we did accomplish a lot and we learned a tremendous amount. We confirmed the hearsay about uh, Government of Canada publications being at risk and in a modest way flagged titles so that libraries can use that information in decision making. Uh, if Library in Canada and Archives Canada does not hold a copy of publications, we will accept transfers to our collection uh, and retain those indefinitely. Um, we have created a list of scarce materials that can also inform uh, digitization. And we have rolled what we learned into the governance and funding model for shared print initiatives at the national level. Slide 11, please. Uh, we are in the midst of developing um, the governance framework for future initiatives and uh, seeking a home um, for um, the lead. Uh, one of the key points is that it be led by an advisory council anchored within an existing shared print consortium. The advantages of this are clear. The experience is there, certainly, and shared overhead costs are two of them. Um, the National Library or Library and Archives Canada, for whom I work, would contribute financially and in kind uh, to the effort. And there would be a part-time coordinator for the program. We've had some very positive discussions um, with various groups. Uh, support is high, as I mentioned. And we're hoping that we will confirm all this in the next couple of months. Next slide, please. I mentioned that we learned a tremendous amount over the course of the project, and in particular as a result of the National Overlap Study. We were delighted that libraries, while bewildered at times, uh, are strongly committed to such an effort. Hindsight, of course, is uh, 2020. Uh, perhaps we should have scaled back our initial pilot to deal with material that has, uh, shall we say, less creative cataloging and maybe tackled monographs only uh, for our first effort. Uh, the shallow dive was probably not a bad choice given the challenges of this particular pilot and wanting to dip our toes into uh, a national effort. Um, and the fact that we know there are other organizations who were not part of the study who will have some of these titles. In the longer term, though, we would be better to have the precision of identifying actual copies. And lastly, I remember Susan Stearns, when she came to talk to us early on, emphasizing the importance of communication. That was dead on. We got better as time went on, for sure. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what next? Uh, I mentioned that we're implementing a new government structure and seeking a home for the national level project. Um, the link between the print preservation initiative and digitization efforts was something that arose over and over uh, when we ran webinars and, um, and talked to individual libraries. Um, it was top of mind. We've had initial conversations with the initiatives that are uh, named there, and that will continue. And there are obviously other initiatives that we can link to as well. Uh, we're looking forward to building on the work that the uh, CCPSWG accomplished and to moving to examine other sorts of material. While our next area's focus would likely be on Canadian publications, there's also potential to expand to overall printed material that is held across institutions in Canada. And my last slide, I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but um, if we do, I'm happy to take them. Um, or you can contact me later uh, through my own email address or through the uh, web address listed on that slide. 
Thank you, Alison. We do have, we do have um, a little bit of time for questions. If anyone's got one, again, um, if you can put them in the chat, please. Not seeing anything come through at this moment, but again, we've got time at the end um, of today if, if anything should come up. So um, I will save those questions if they come in for later on for Alison. So thank you, Alison. Thank you.